In this video, we're going to examine exactly why there are so many problems with electric vehicles in the cold, and why they're just not fit for purpose in low temperature environments. You'll have no doubt seen the news of EV misery in the US last week when Teslas were piling up at charging stations and many of them ran out of battery and had to be towed. This comes as little surprise to anyone who knows a bit about chemical reactions, but came as a huge shock to many EV owners who'd been led to believe that buying an EV would be a simple swap from a gas car. How wrong they were. If you're after EV and net zero sanity, you've come to the right place. Welcome to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney YouTuber. If you like my videos and content, please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment down below. As you may know, EVs are powered by a kind of device known as a lithium ion cell. We should distinguish between the cell, which is an individual chemical container, and the battery, which is multiple cells connected together. Some people I've spoken to are surprised that an EV battery consists of thousands of individual lithium ion cells, which look like a large AA battery, all wired together and packed into a metal can which often takes up the space of the entire floor pan of a car. They are huge and can weigh anything from 700 kilograms upwards. So this is going to be a whistle-stop explanation of how a lithium-ion battery works, so strap yourselves in. Apart from the gases hydrogen and helium, lithium, a solid metal, is the simplest element on Earth and consists of just three protons and three neutrons in the nucleus and three electrons spinning around the outside. The protons have a charge of plus one each and the electrons have a charge of minus one each, which balance out to make the atom electrically neutral. Neutrons have no charge, so they don't change anything. This is tiny, by the way, 180 picometers across, which means one millimeter would contain over five million lithium atoms lined up in a row, or 140 million in an inch. The three electrons are contained in two separate shells or orbits, two electrons in the inner orbit and one electron in the outer orbit. Despite the lithium atom being electrically neutral and fairly stable under normal conditions, lithium wants to get rid of that outer electron because without that it is even more stable. You can see this if you drop lithium into water. It will react violently as it gives up those electrons to the water, forming hydrogen gas and a chemical compound of lithium, lithium hydroxide, and giving off a huge amount of heat which will often ignite the hydrogen. The energy released is essentially that difference in stability between the lithium metal with the electron and without it. A lithium ion battery harnesses this difference in energy by controlling the split of the electron away from the lithium atom, forming what is known as a positively charged lithium ion and using that electron to do some useful work like driving a motor. Here's a diagram of how it works. I'm not going to go into detail as it's pretty complex, but to put it simply, when the cell is providing power, the lithium atoms which are stored in the graphite anode or negative terminal release an electron which travels out of the cell through the load, the vehicle motor or whatever, and back to the positive terminal or cathode. At the same time, the lithium ion that is left at the anode migrates through the battery over to the cathode and recombines with the electron. When the battery is charging, the reverse happens, but you need an external power source, the charger, to pull all those electrons back from the cathode and pump them back into the carbon on the anode, forcing the lithium ions to migrate back through the cell and back into the carbon where they're ready to discharge again. OK, so now we understand how the cells work, we can look at all the reasons why they are absolutely terrible in the cold. The primary reason is simple. Chemical reactions go slower when it's cold and faster when it's hot. When you cool down pretty much any chemical reaction, it slows down. Think about dissolving salt in water. It takes ages in cold water, but is easy in hot water. That's because there's more energy in the hot water to split the molecules of salt apart. Lithium ion batteries are exactly the same. The charging rates are slower, the discharge rates are slower, everything is slower. This is why EVs generally have battery conditioning systems to warm up the cells in order to get them up to temperature where they are functioning at a reasonable rate. If you're plugged into your home charger, this might not be a problem because the power required for the heater can be taken from the grid. But if you're stuck outside in the cold waiting for a charge, the only way to heat the battery is to use the battery itself, which discharges your battery even more. It's a terrible vicious circle. Waste battery warming the battery or have terrible charging rates. But this is just scratching the surface. 
There are many other more complex chemical processes which happen at low temperatures, which degrade not just the cell's performance, but the structure and integrity of the cell itself, particularly when attempting to fast charge in such conditions. One of the most dangerous is known as lithium dendrites, which are microscopic branch or tree-like structures of metallic lithium that start growing on the electrodes in the cell. These can eventually pass from one electrode to the other, shorting the cell out and leading to a rapid discharge of the cell and thermal runaway. And we all know what that looks like. Look, I think that's probably enough for one video. There's more on this that I'll cover in future videos, but suffice it to say, battery electric propulsion for vehicles in cold climates is a truly terrible idea. If you've followed my channel for a while, thank you by the way, uh, you'll know that my view is that the transition to alternative energy sources will take many decades and cannot be rushed by imposing false deadlines like 2035 or 2050 by which we have to be net zero. The only way this transition will happen is by allowing the necessary time to find and develop the right alternative. Governments have staked all their money on electrification and it's my view that it's the wrong horse and as a result they're going to lose big time. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you have any tips or stories, you can hit me up on Instagram or by email. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.